Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one, you may be noticing a bit of a change in background, so I'm actually in Osaka in Japan to visit my little boy. So yeah, I hadn't been planning to do sit-down reviews for you here, but there were a few beers that I came across from breweries that I've really wanted to try for quite a wee while, and I managed to set up a little makeshift review station here in my hotel room. So um, yeah, just thought, well, why not? Let's go for it. It. So we've got a couple of beers from Japan, we've also got a few interesting things from Canada as well that we're going to look at that I haven't seen before. Uh, these beers were bought at Craft Beer Base Mother Tree in Umeda, which is where I also got this nice glass from as well. So uh, yeah, hopefully you guys enjoy these videos over the next wee while and these breweries as I say are ones that I've wanted to check out for quite some time in Japan. So yeah, for the one that we're going to kick off with today, we are going to go to a brewery that I've never tried anything from before. These guys have been building a a very good reputation for themselves over the last couple of years from what I understand. Their beers started to get out there a little bit in sort of 2019-ish and of course the last time I was here in Japan was Christmas 2019 at very early 2020. So yeah this is the first time I've actually seen their beers in the flesh. But the beer itself that we're going to have a look at is a style that I very much enjoy. It's one that I do hope makes a bit of a comeback over the next wee while and this is supposed to be really nice actually. So needless to say I'm very curious to see what this one is going to have in store for us. Hopefully it's another good beer. Hopefully it makes for an interesting review. And as always, I hope that you guys enjoy my take on this one as well. So um, yeah, for this review then, we are going to go to Mochi Muni, a little port town in Shizuoka Prefecture, which is a bit to the south of Tokyo here in Japan. And we're going to have a look at my first beer, from West Coast Brewing. So this particular beer is called Particle Ocean. It comes in at 9% ABV and this one is a West Coast Triple IPA. So not something you come across all that often anymore, but yeah, considering the story behind the owner of this brewery, I thought going West Coast first was the best place to go. So uh, yeah, this should be really quite interesting. I've wanted to try West Coast Brewing's beers for quite a wee while. The Japanese beer reviewers talk very highly of this brewery. Do check out my friend Neva at uh, Japanese Craft Beers, incidentally. This is a brewery that he told me I really, really needed to check out while I was here in Japan. So now we're doing it. And I'll put the link to his channel in the video description for you below. So make sure you check him out and show them some love as well. But uh, yeah, 9% West Coast Triple IPA, this should be pretty awesome. So as always with my reviews then, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery before we taste the beer. If you want to get straight to the tasting though, just fast forward, all the usual links are in the video description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I've done or will do in the future, I should say, from West Coast Brewing. This is the very first time I'm trying one of their beers, as I mentioned, but there's all the usual social media down there. If you want to see more reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The support that you give is massively appreciated. And as always, do remember that you can go into the channel homepage and search for beer using the geography tagging system. Just go to the search bar, put in your hometown, county, state, prefecture, whatever it is you like. And if I've reviewed beers from your local area, they should pop up. And you can also check out the playlist of beers from different countries this one will appear in the Japanese playlist which already has a good number of beers in if you want Japanese reviews as well check out Nevit at Japanese craft beers so um, yeah let's go on then and have a little look at my brewery notes before we taste the beer so West Coast Brewing as I've mentioned to you already are based in Mochi Muni in Shizuoka Prefecture in Japan right next to Mount Fuji and again to the south of Tokyo a little bit but the brewery was founded back in 2019 by Derek Baston who is originally from Seattle in Washington over on the US West Coast and he has a background as an architect. So Derek originally came to Shizuoka back in 2003 but he would often visit different breweries during his trips home to the US and he says that he's always been inspired by the craftsmanship that has gone into the American West Coast beers and he really wanted to bring that to Japan because at the time that he moved over there wasn't really many people doing this. But apparently the idea to found his own brewery can be traced back to 2014 when he designed the Shizuoka distillery for or Gaia Flow, but he says that this was his first real look into the inside of the craft brewing and distilling world and inspired him to go on and visit other breweries and distilleries and to talk to those in the industry. And apparently doing this made, a, made the whole process of starting your own brewery seem a lot less daunting to him. So he decided to go for it. But he founded a bar in Shizuoka called 12 to test the water and see if the types of beers that he wanted to brew would be a hit. But it quickly be 
became clear that they would, and it was this that really kind of turned the key for them. So they, they got a premises in an abandoned tuna processing factory in the Mochi Mune Marina, they renovated it and converted it into a brewery. This brewery is equipped with a 10 BBL system, which is around 1,600 litres per brew, for those of you that use the metric system, the right system, I'll point out. Uh, but they've got 10 fermentation vessels in there, also two bright beer tanks, and they produce in the region of 12 to 20,000 litres of beer per month. And the three brewers that they have are Satoshi Niwa, who's from Japan. He's also the brewing manager. And then they've got Cedric Mel, who is from France, and also Grant Schroeder, who is from the US. But the brewery's mascot, as you can see on the um, on the front of this, is um, Hawk Dude, and you'll find him in different worlds doing different things. Apparently these illustrations are based on Derek's uh, hobbies and just things that he likes to do, but the artwork is designed by Simon Henshaw, who I believe is from Manchester in England. Do correct me on that though if I'm wrong. But over the first few years, these guys have leaned mostly toward brewing different kinds of IPAs. I have seen a few um, kind of modern sour beers from them as well, right enough, but they are apparently in the process of establishing a barrel program and as of December 2022, when I'm filming this review for you, these guys have produced 210 different kinds of beer according to Untapped, and they will no doubt increase that over the next week. While these guys are very prolific with their output, from what I understand, five or six beers a month, so that is pretty impressive actually. But um, yeah, that is everything I can really tell you about the history of West Coast Brewing for the moment. If you want to learn more about these guys, you can check out the brewery website. It tells you the story pretty well. That's where I got most of the information for this video. But yeah, you can go and check that out. Or if you find yourself in Shizuoka, you can go and visit the place. I think that's something that I do need to do. I'll need to go and check out the 12 bar and film a little out and about video there at some point in the future, because I will be back to Japan quite regularly, of course. But um, yeah, check out all those links. If you want to learn more about the different beers that they've done, look at the Untapped page or go and check out my friend Nevit at the Japanese Craft Beers channel. So um, yeah, let's get on and have a little look at this beer itself. So this one is hopped with Strata, Mosaic and New Zealand Cascade. We've had all of these hops before. Strata comes in about 14-15% uh, alpha acid and it has this big sort of melony kind of strawberry type thing, but also some other tropical fruits in there. Uh, Mosaic we know very very, very well. 14% alpha acid, of course, big tangerine notes. Both of those are American hops, incidentally. And then we've got New Zealand Cascade in there. Uh, New Zealand Cascade, I haven't had all that much, but um, it is about 8% alpha acid, like its American counterpart. And in my experience, Cascade always gives you this nice kind of stronger uh, it gives you a little bit of a passion fruity sort of thing, but you can also get a little bit of a sultana figgy type quality from it. Very familiar with that hop, of course, because one of my hometown beers uh, is a Cascade hopped Czech style Pilsner. Love that beer. Harveston Brewery, Shahalian, if you want to check it out. But uh, yeah, a nice hop bill in this one. Curious to see what it has. And as we mentioned earlier, this one is a 9% West Coast Triple IPA. The Particle Ocean, I'll just let you have a little look at the artwork on this one before we open it up. I should also point out as well that this beer is a um, is a 500 milliliter can, which is quite unusual for Japan actually. And they said that the idea behind doing the 500 mil cans was to make them stand out a wee bit more next to the, I think it's 350 milliliters is the standard measurement in Japan, but yeah, about the same size as the 330s. So um, yeah, it looks pretty nice this one. This beer was a little bit more expensive because of that. Um, it was, I think I paid 1,200 yen for this one. So uh, yeah, that's about $12 American. So we can work back from there, maybe in the region of like 10, uh, 10 euros, nine pounds sterling, something like that. Probably a little bit less than that. Actually, the yen is quite weak at the moment, but still craft beer is a little bit more expensive in Japan. Uh, you just have to live with that if you're here. That's the, un the unfortunate thing, but I wanted to try this. I don't care. I was kind of just like, fuck it. Why not? But yeah, 9% triple West Coast IPA. This one, let's get this guy out into the glass and let's see what we have. If I can actually get the thing open. I hurt this finger the other day. <laughs> so yeah, now we have it. We'll get this one out and into the glass. There we go. Just be very careful with the pour. And of course, I usually drink the beers out of my tulip glass, but in Japan, it's actually a lot more popular to drink craft beer in glasses like this pint one. They seem to like the American pint uh, type glass, but yeah. I think we'll leave it at that for the moment so we can swirl it around and get a proper smell of it. But um, yeah, this looks pretty nice, I have to say. You can see 
I did actually rinse the glass out before, but it's given a hell of a lot of carbonation at the moment. So um, yeah, anyway, you, this beer's kind of poured pretty much as you would expect of any West Coast IPA. So we've got maybe about 80, 85% of the beer out into the glass, something like that. Uh, but you can see it's poured with a nice um, sort of two-third finger frothy, I would say slightly cream coloured head. I'll just let you guys have a little look at that. You can see a nice mix of smaller bubbles at the bottom there and bigger ones toward the top. But the beer itself does look very, very nice, I have to say. Quite a lot of carbonation just gathering on the uh, the bottom of the glass there. <laughs> As I say, I gave it a rinse out and I washed it beforehand, so it just happens sometimes. But anyway, you can see this beer does look pretty nice. In terms of the colour, I would describe this as a kind of richer yellow leaning toward amber. Remember, the colour of your beer depends on one, the type of malts that you use. This goes a long way to determining your EBC rating. Two, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise and thus you get a darker colour of beer. I'm also just going to turn this off because we've gone through the notes now and I can see it on the, the screen, of course. But yeah, um, as I say, this beer certainly does look the part of a West Coast IPA. But yeah, remember, uh, type of malts that you use, length of your wort boil is also going to play a role because the longer you boil the wort, the more the sugars caramelise, thus you get a darker colour of beer. Any bad lesion that you do or any adjuncts that you put into the beer will affect its colour as well. But when it comes to IPAs, you don't really have to care about those latter two variables. It is type of malt and um, the length of your wort boil. This one for me, I don't think this is... It doesn't look like it's got too much in the way of like darker caramel malts. It's certainly one of the more kind of blondy coloured uh, West Coast IPAs that we've had. But for me, this style can kind of lean. It can sort of lean two ways. It can either be more of a kind of caramelly, oily sort of thing, such as Sierra Nevada Torpedo, or it can be a little bit more of a kind of bready, biscuity affair, such as the uh, Russian River Pliny the Elder. And I've got a feeling that from the colour of this one, it is going to be a little bit more akin to the Russian River uh playing with the elder type west coast ipa but um yeah it certainly looks pretty nice anyway nothing surprising about the appearance of this one but you can see the carbonation is fairly active in this one but yeah there you can see the nice craft beer base symbol uh with this one so um yeah i think we've said everything we need to about the appearance of this beer a little bit of natural haze to it but i get the feeling i think this beer probably has been filtered actually just from how clear it is so uh, yeah let's have a wee look at the aroma of this one then and see how we go oh yeah i'm going to say straight away this smells pretty damn nice um old school nice and old school this beer for sure um yeah that does smell really nice um, first off with this one, it's giving you everything you want from the style. You've got that oily fruitiness, you've got that nice big green component, and you've also got a little bit of the sweet malty backbone. You know, that those are the three things that you want from an old school West Coast IPA. I just really hope that this one does have the big sort of 70, 80 IBU bitterness. That's been what's missing from this style, in my, uh, in my opinion, over the last wee while. But um, yeah. This one does smell pretty nice. So let's break that aroma down for you and describe it a wee bit more kind of in depth. So um, aroma wise, the backbone of this beer, you get a nice little bit of that. Um, you do get a nice little bit of a kind of fresh white bready bread crust with this one. And as I was saying earlier, this is going to be more of a Pliny the Elder type um, West Coast IPA rather than the more oily, caramelly sort of thing. So you've got this nice little bit of fresh, white bready bread crust coming out of this one. You can absolutely smell that lovely fresh um, kind of white bread in there too. There's maybe a little touch of... Um, there's maybe a little touch of like a Jacob's Cream Cracker note to this one as well. So fresh white bread bread crust, Jacob's Cream Cracker, and then on top of that you have the... Um, yeah, on top of that, you start to get some of the more um, brown sugary notes. I would also say there's a little bit of a wholemeal brown bready sort of thing to this one, actually. So that, that I have to say, is quite interesting with this beer. Um, there's a little bit of a wholemeal brown bread as well. So bread crust, cracker, wholemeal brown bread, and then you get the more fl fresh, fluffy white bread out of this one. But the brown sugary side of this beer... Is quite nice and the other thing about this beer is that it doesn't smell madly boozy I mean at 9% ABV it's not the strongest of triple IPAs that we've come across actually but um, 
for me, a triple IP is always around 10%. I would say that. That's what you're seeing in Europe a lot at the moment, is most of these IPAs are about 10, the, the triples are about 10. Um, nine for me is kind of toward the top end of a, a double. But anyway, I, I think in Japan, they're, they're still defining all these things here, I guess. That's one of the things. But um, yeah, the brown sugary notes in this one are not madly boozy. It actually covers its booze quite well, this beer. So you have got a little bit of a straight up sweet caramel in there. But to me, the brown sugary side of this beer leans a bit more towards a McVitie's digestive biscuity type quality. That's what we're getting out of this one. Maybe a sort of cookie note as well. That's maybe better for American English, actually. I'm not sure what's the best descriptor to use for the Japanese, but of course most Japanese uh, won't be watching an English review. They'll be watching a Japanese one. But anyway, um, so yeah, the brown sugary notes in this one are very nice. As I say, this really is more like a kind of Pliny the Elder um, type West Coast double IP, but sweet, a little bit of sweet caramel, McVitie's digestive biscuit, maybe just a little hint of like a Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy sort of thing in there, but not too much of that at all. Uh, very well balanced beer in terms of its aroma, I have to say. So let's go on to the hoppy side of things then. And I'm going to say straight away, the Cascade it comes out of this beer for me right away. But my nose is just tuned to that because of that, the beer I mentioned earlier. But yeah, on the green component, little tiny touch of earthiness in there. I think that's most likely to come from Mosaic when it comes to these beers. I've always found Mosaic has that little touch of earthiness. Um, you've got quite a nice bright floral character to this one from the... Aroma, I am thinking that this one maybe relies a bit more on late addition and dry hopping. The aroma, that the green side of the aroma on this one isn't too deep and dank, so we'll need to see about that when we um when we taste the beer. But yeah, you have got a nice little bit of a kind of quite bright floral aromatistic. It's got a little touch of spiciness to it. You've also got a little bit of that grassy, zesty character in there, but the grassiness has a little bit of wetness to it as well, I have to say. So that certainly is quite interesting. Uh, in this regard for me. I do like how this beer goes together. Absolutely. Um, yeah, aroma-wise, the hoppy side of things is quite nice, but the more that I smell of it, I do get a bit more depth out of the green component, so maybe that is a, that's maybe a good sign. As, as I say, I want bitterness in West Coast IPAs. But yeah, on the fruity side of things, it is kind of what you'd expect. There's definitely a good little bit of that melony character, the oily melon from the uh, from the strata in this one um i'm getting a little bit i have to admit i'm getting a little bit of that softer a softer passion fruit i'm getting yeah i'm getting a little bit of a softer passion fruit in this one and also a little bit of a kind of um yeah softer passion fruit a little bit of a kind of juicy juicy mango as well but then yeah that it's got quite a big oily melony character to it absolutely um on the um on the citrusy side of things, it's got a little bit, it certainly has that big juicy, uh, that big juicy tangerine note from the, the, from the mosaic in this one that really sits out in this beer for me. But what I'm noticing is that the backbone of the fruits in this, in this beer, it's got that kind of sultana, you know, dry white green grapey character and it has got a little bit of the juicy kind of figgy note that you'd expect of Cascade. For me, Cascade is the backbone of this one and I wouldn't be surprised if it was the one that was used as the bittering hop in this beer and the other two were added a little bit later on just from the way the aroma goes together. But yeah, nice kind of melony quality to this one. There's a little bit of, as I say, softer passion fruit and mango in there, some sultana underneath, but then you've got this juicy, oily, tangerine orange coming out of it. Um, usually Strata gives you a little bit of a strawberry note as well, and you can get that in this beer right at the front of the nose. It's like an almost candied strawberry. It reminds me of like Haribo strobs, actually, those sweets. I don't know if you get those in the States, actually, or in Japan, but um, it's certainly this, it has a wee bit of that like um, high chew <laughs> type quality to it on the very front of the nose. That's quite interesting. But yeah, aroma wise, this one is very nice. Most definitely more of a kind of Pliny the Elder type West Coast double IPA. So yeah, let's have a taste of this one then and see how we go. Uh, as I say, always spend a little bit of time. Uh, always spend a little bit of time to ponder over the aroma of the beer before you get stuck in. For me, that's half the experience. But yeah, we'll have a taste of this one now. So this is the Particle Ocean, a 9% West Coast Triple IPA from uh, West Coast Brewing in um, Mochi Muni, if I'm remembering the name right, in Shizuoka Prefecture, right next to Mount Fuji here in Japan. My first sit-down Japanese craft beer review 
in about three years nearly. This is awesome. Let's get stuck in. Slanja, Skull, Cheers, Campari. Gonna say that's a solid beer that. That is very nice. Thumbs up to West Coast Brewing. If this is the kind of standard of stuff they're doing, you can see why a lot of people have been saying this brewery is pretty damn good. Uh, one of the things I will say about this beer is, first impression is it strikes me as like one of the new takes on the West Coast IPA rather than being too old school. And the main reason for that is the bitterness. But the bitterness, in fairness, is building in this one. But this strikes me as more of a low bitterness West Coast IPA. But that is nice. Let's just put the rest of this out into the glass. I am going to be enjoying this one myself. You can see that the beer has just got a little bit more hazy there. I think there maybe was just a wee touch of sedimentation inside the can. But um, yeah, this is nice. Um, and the bitterness is building in this one, in fairness. I don't think this is quite as bitter as some of the old school ones that we had but um yeah this is pretty damn nice i have to say so um yeah in terms of the the backbone of this beer then we'll break the flavor down for you and describe it so we'll start on the middle third of the palate you can feel that the backbone of this beer it's that lovely fresh white bready bread crust absolutely this is nice So, you've got that fresh, white bready bread crust there forming the backbone of the beer. And it does almost feel as if the bread crust has a little bit of the flour on it. It just tastes like you've bought it straight out of the bakery. Something I really miss from my time in Germany was the fresh white bread. It's awesome. So yeah, you've got that little bit of bread crust there in the middle of your palate. Toward the, the front of that middle third of your palate, you might just get a little touch of a slightly woody flavour in there. So I'm just getting little tiny hints of wood in there but on top of that you start to get the nice bready notes so for me um there is a little touch of a like jacob's cream crackery sort of thing but not too much for me after the bread crust it is more of like a wholemeal brown bready sort of thing so yeah nice little bit of a wholemeal brown bready character coming out of this beer and i think on top of that, you start. I think you get a little bit more graininess out of this beer the further into the aftertaste that you go. And then on top of that, you can feel the fresh white bread coming out of it. So yeah, nice little bit of fresh white bread in the beer. Uh, yeah, I do have a feeling, I do wonder, normally this is one of the things with West Coast IPAs, is that they're most often they are just barley malt. But I have a feeling there might be a little touch of wheat in this one, just from the way the flavour is going together. I don't think it will say... It probably it probably does say in the can, but you know my Japanese isn't good enough to be able to uh, <laughs> to translate the kanjis and things. Reading hiragana and stuff is is easy enough in katakana too, but getting all those kanjis is a little bit difficult. But um, yeah, the with this beer, the white bready layer that you get it has a nice bit of fluffiness to it. But then on top of that, there's just a slightly denser layer there. It gives the beer a bit of smoothness and there's also a bit of bitiness at the back of the palate too which does make me think there's maybe a touch of wheat in this one as i say normally west coast ipas are all barley malt but it's not unheard of to either put a little bit of oat or a little bit of wheat in there i know um sculpin from ballast point was uh, one where they would do that and the wipa style the wheat ipa style is actually something that's fairly popular in um in japan you know um, Mino beer have a WIP which is a lovely beer incidentally very old school craft beer that but I do like it so yeah on top of the white bread layer you just have this slightly more dense layer that's got a little touch of bitiness to it and to me that just feels like a little bit of wheat and then above that you start to get the kind of brown sugary notes out of the beer so we'll focus on that now I'm worried that this thing's going to fall over it's balanced but it's okay, this glass is a little bit heavy, but what can you do? <laughs> I can see disaster happening. But anyway, 
So as I say, on top of that, you get a little bit of the brown sugar. If you go to the dead center of your palate, you've got a, in the middle of the third of your tongue, you've got that little bit of sweet caramel in there. Then as you move further out from that, you've got a little bit of a, you do get a little touch of that Werther's original butter candy, butterscotchy sort of thing, but it is quite minimal. I will say that. And as you move out towards the extremities of that middle third of your palate, on top of the white bread, there's a little bit of a more McVitie's digestive biscuity, slightly cookie type flavour in this one. So yeah, you can feel that sitting on top of what I suspect is a little touch of wheat in this beer. But I think that covers the middle third of the palate with this one. Definitely one of the more bready West Coast IPAs that I've, I've come across in recent times. But yeah, border region between middle third and back third of your palate. You get a little bit of that bready build up in there. A little bit bread crusty, but mainly a white bread. The base, the base of that... Uh, back third of your palate is a little bit more bread crusty. I like how that goes together. You get a little bit more greeniness out of this. As I always say, more grainy, bitter flavours come out further back on the palate. The sweeter ones come out further forward. But yeah, you've got that lovely little bit of grainy, bready character in there. On top of that, you can feel the cracker as well. There's a little bit of that dryness to the crackery layer. Then you have the, the kind of wholemeal brown bread. And that layer feels a little bit taller and again, a little bit more airy. Then you've got a... Then you have a kind of... Um, white you've got a layer of white bready character coming out of this one so yeah kind of taller white bready layer in there and again it feels really nice and eerie and then above that there's a little bit of um bitiness to the beer and again this makes me suspect there's a little touch of wheat in this one you've got a little bit of um just a wee touch of what i suspect is wheaty bitiness in there and then above that you've got the kind of yeasty characters coming out of the beer so let's just look at those yeasty pardon me those yeasty elements with this one So yeah, you've got this nice kind of, you have got this nice sort of tall um, layer on the back through your palate. And then yeah, the, the yeasty notes are a little bit, they've got a slightly kind of farmhousey character. So you've got a little bit of that almost kind of fresh farmhousey bread in there. A little touch of like honeycomb and as I say, all of that sits on top of what I suspect is a bit of wheaty bitiness. But definitely back through your palate, you can feel the flavour is taller. Then as you come further forward into the middle palate, the thing just condenses down that wee bit and squashes together. But I think at this point we've said everything we need to about the malt base and the yeasty characteristics of this beer. But I think this is really nicely done. But let's focus on the hoppy side of things then. So back corners of the palate, definitely a little touch of earthiness in there for me. And I think that's going to come both from the Cascade and from the... Um, and from the mosaic in this one, those are both going to give you a little bit of earthiness. We need to remember in this beer though that it's New Zealand Cascade, not American Cascade. It is slightly different. Remember water profiles and uh, earth profiles in different parts of the world are different. So these hops will taste different if you grow them in different places. But it does, I have to say, Cascade, the Cascade notes I'm getting in this one do feel quite similar. Just maybe a bit brighter. Um, but yeah, a little bit of earthiness in there as you come further forward. There's a little touch of a herbal character. And as you push toward the kind of front corners of the palate, you've got a nice bright floral aromaticity. I don't find it all too spicy. There is a little touch of spice to it. But round the front curve of the tongue, there's definitely a little bit more of a... There is definitely a wee bit more of a kind of McVitie's, um, not McVitie's thing, there's a bit more of a grassy zestiness in there. I'm getting a bit of biscuitiness just under the fruity character in this beer. But yeah, you've got that nice zesty, grassy character around the front of your tongue there and it's, it really is quite nice. Um, as I've always said, when it comes to IPAs, there are three types of hopping. Early edition hopping, first hour of your wort boil, that gives you mainly bitterness. Late edition hopping, last half hour of the wort boil, a little bit of bitterness but mainly flavour and aroma. And then dry hopping after the wort boil, that's all flavour and aroma. So um, yeah, you've got um, the, the, these three types of hoppings. West Coast IPAs tend to use all three. New England IPAs tend to use the latter two, tend to rely on the latter two. Um, with this beer, it does build a little bit with its bitterness um, the more that you drink of it. But I suspect this one has a little bit of early edition hop and you know, mainly are not relying on late and dry hopping as well. It's not the most bitter of West Coast IPAs. It strikes me as a more kind of new generation West Coast uh, IPA beer. I mean, back in the day when I was getting into these 2012, 2013, they had the big 80, 90 IBU hit. This beer doesn't quite have that, but it works. It has got a little bit of bitterness to it, but not quite that high. And as I say, the, the, it's the depth. The way you can usually tell is if the beer smells very dank and it gives you this really deep, floral and kind of piney character that's when you get it but this one is more bright it's kind of and that's kind of what you get from the new england beers these days so definitely more of a new 
uh, a new generation West Coast IPA, this one, than a, a proper old school one for me. Apart, well, in the hopping side of things, but in its flavour profile, it's a really nice take on the, the style, I have to say. But I think that covers the green component. Let's go to the front third of your palette. So the border region between front third and middle third of your palette, again, you get a little bit of that white bready buildup. The base of that front third of your palette, smooth white bread, little touch of McVitie's digestive biscuit on top of it again. Then you get that nice oily bubble where the juicy fruity esters just roll their way out of the beer. So let's look at the fruity side of things with this beer. So, the fruity side of the beer, for me, it's kind of what you would expect from these hops, to be honest with you. You can feel that Cascade, as I suspected it would be, Cascade is sort of the anchor of this beer, and that makes me think the early edition hop is, is Cascade in this one. But at the back of that front third of your palate, you can feel there's a sort of oily, sultana, you know, dry white, green, grapey base there. You've got a little bit of that there, but at the very back, of the front third of your palate in the base, you can feel that little bit of kind of pungent uh, grapefruit. And again, that's one of the key signatures of Cascade for me. So I think, yeah, Sultana and a bit of grapefruit from the Cascade in the base at the back of that front third of your palate. But on top of that, you absolutely get the more oily kind of melony character from the, uh, from the strata in this one. You can get that right away. I don't get as much kind of mango and passion fruit in the flavour as I was in the aroma. That's one of the areas where this beer diverges from its aroma a little bit. So for me, it's mostly melon that I'm getting in the back half of that front third of the palate. But as you move further forward, you start to get other things out of this beer. When you move into the front half of that front third of your palate, it's all about the mosaic. You've got that nice, juicy, tangerine -y and slightly oily note out of this beer. And that is all about the mosaic. As you reach the kind of front tip of your tongue, though, you will notice that as you go into the aftertaste, you start to get a little bit of that kind of very slightly strawberry note from uh, from the strata as well. But I've always found that strata, the strawberry is a bit more prominent in the aroma than it is in the flavour. So yeah, you have got that going on with this one as well. But yeah, Cascade is definitely the anchor of this one, as I say. Um, you know, you've got that sultana you note, bit of grapefruit, the melon on top, then as you move forward, the tangerine orange dominates and just a little touch of the strawberry note behind the front tip of the tongue. Maybe a very little bit of lime in there as well, actually, just as the, the fruits meet the grassy esters on the tip of the tongue. But like I say, a really nice West Coast IPA, this one. Dangerously drinkable for 9%, I will say that. It is quite a dangerously drinkable beer, this one. Um, I think that's everything we need to say about the flavour. Let's round off with the mouthfeel. Mouthfeel-wise, for me, this beer... Um, I think it's top end of mid-bodied. Carbonation is quite smooth in this one. It's actually quite a smooth beer. It's not the oiliest of West Coast IPAs that I've come across. Um, the water apparently is very good in this area, but you can feel, and I, you can feel in this, it's quite clean, but it's quite smooth. And of course, the water profile will affect your mouthfeel and the flavour to a degree with the beer as well. So this beer for me is a very smooth uh, West Coast IPA, which kind of suits the slightly breadier malt base that it has. So yeah. Top end of mid-bodied, smooth carbonation, generally quite a smooth beer, but there is a little bit of oiliness to this one. You can see that as well. In terms of IBUs, I don't find this one blowing the head off me in terms of IBUs. I think this is 50, maybe 60 IBUs. Um, it's certainly not a way up in the kind of 80 bracket, which we always used to get with this style. This is more of a new generation West Coast IPA for me, but I still like it. Um, in terms of the malt base then, as we said, there's a little bit of grayness in there, but mainly it's a smooth bready IPA. There's a little touch of brown sugary sweetness. And as we said earlier, the fruits are really nice and oily in this one. I, li I like how that goes together, but absolutely more of a kind of Pliny the Elder type West Coast IPA, this one, rather than the more oily Sierra Nevada Torpedo. Uh, take on the style but um yeah lovely beer this one and a very nice introduction to west coast uh, brewing this one a west coast triple ipa so yeah we do have a hazy ipa from these guys that we're going to check out as well because apparently they do that style very well too but um yeah let's leave it at that for this one so this one was the particle ocean a west coast triple ipa at nine percent abv from west coast brewing and um what was it Mont um Munimochi, I forget the name of the town, in Shizuoka Prefecture, right next to Mount Fuji 
in Japan. Really glad I got to review one of their beers when I'm here. This is one of the breweries I've been wanting to check out for quite a wee while. But let's leave it at that. Thank you again for watching my reviews. Until the next time, please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this beer in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from West Coast Brewing as well. Do give me some Japanese brewery and beer set recommendations if you have them. Always great to get the support from people watching here in Japan. But yeah, this was really, really cool to review this one. So again, thank you for watching. Check out my social media. Check out West Coast Brewing social media. And you will be seeing a few more Japanese film reviews over the next week while and some out and about videos. Slanja, Skull, cheers. See you guys in the next one. Kampai.